and hello world hello everyone another thursday another meeting another amazing journey towards pure love and harmony or actually world within the pure love and harmony on this journey thank you vedran for being by my side dealing all of this uh, technicality and taking care about us being on time as much as we can but at least staying on staying on staying on this path requires a lot of prep and a lot of things so i'm very grateful for you doing that uh <clears throat> so can you give us a uh, are you done there so maybe we can just you know get together and uh mm. you have yourself in the Yes, good evening everyone. Thank you so much and thank you for your dedication and sharing all your years of wisdom with us and got in the helping us learn. <laughs> Make yourself a little more in a in a screen. Yeah, come closer. <clears throat> okay, there you go. Perfect. So, uh what we're going to go today around. I see we have a lot of question and a lot of uh great comments. I uh applaud to your bravery and to your um openness to share your path, your vulnerability uh within this path and everything that happens there with us. uh with we actually everything that happens with you and because of that uh, i i am very grateful i am very grateful uh keep a good work because once we enter as i said last time previously once we enter this world of uh, conscious awakening to conscious living living present in a moment uh, within the consci conscious experience of the present time uh then actually our life uh, and our environment need to adjust to that as well and often time we're going to experience the probably hardships on the, on um, anything that can go that direction so how do you know that change is inevitable and actually uh the choice we made is the right choice because extreme uh, often time radical uh, changes might appear in our in our life through uh <clears throat> usually becomes like uh, uh that pre pe uh, friends that you interacted with you start slowly kind of just to you know lose interest common interest in are you okay hmm? yeah i'm good i'm good uh then often times some uh physical illness might occur that's that's all a part of the process you know uh you become what you surround yourself with but also our surrounding becomes like what we are that's that's always a match and then we when we when we get on that path we need to agree to a change that's going to happen around us if that means that you're going to get the thoughts about moving yourself away from the people that you don't feel comfortable anymore with that you uh choose interest even if those are the best friends of yours agree to that because that might inspire inspire them uh to kind of dig in this uh philosophy and movement of change themselves but don't try to you know stay in uh, in the environment that for no matter what reason is actually um <clears throat> making you be stuck why do we get to that point is because we have um uh, what's going on there I just wanted to bring the microphone a little bit closer. Oh, can you hear us good now? Is it good? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh let's focus now on uh, on uh, on a topic that you wanted to discuss. So, can you bring uh, that uh, questions up so we can move on? Yeah, so today's topic was all about how we can treat our dogs better and it goes back to the episode that we had a lot of feedback from in terms of how the dogs are in nature structured the same 
dynamic as the family. So I think it would be helpful to talk about that. You know, you, last time you spoke about the mother, and then today you were going to discuss the father and how that relates to the structure of the dogs. And once we understand those dynamics, we can really become strong leaders for our pets and for our dogs. Uh, firstly, ourself, I guess that's the most important thing. Uh, <clears throat> so the father figure in life is very important, yet oftentimes uh, missing. Uh, no child can develop themselves uh, properly without the uh, presence of the father, energy of the father, uh, allowing a father to be a father and uh, letting whatever, whatever ideas we hold in our mind, whatever actions uh, there, the, his were, uh, no matter uh, the, what holds us back from embracing our father and finding a peace within ourselves, with our father, uh, we're going to struggle through the life. Energy of the father is very important because shines a path of one through the life. And uh, oftentimes energy of missing father within can be expressed through different type of, of um, you know, ch life challenges. Uh, for example, oftentimes we can find uh, the profession. We can find ourselves uh, in, in any profession. We, we don't know what our path is. We always think that we are on some path, but for no matter what reason, we are doubting that. Uh, insecurity of that comes without, uh, comes from the point that we are actually missing, missing a light of the life. If the mother is an earth, the father of ours is a sun, and then the sun shines on the earth, creating and lighting up the path of a child that goes through the life. And again, we are a creature, and again, we go through the same story like last time. Um, we are creatures of love, and the love is a powerful life source that lives within us. The problem becomes why we are not aware of that. How do we know that we, are, we have a love within us? It's because we are alive. If that wouldn't be a case, our body and our mind and our spine, our energy within the body wouldn't exist. So, as I said, the father and the mother, by law, systemic law, laws of nature, laws of universe, are in service of the child's life. And that is why when we in tune with our father and we allow energy of our father to flow through us in first we allow we allow it we and we we allow it actually by allowing we become aware of them aware of that we the, the, the that energy flows through us anyhow we either wanted we that or not either our parents want wanted or not it flows it's by the law it's like a it's like a law of gravity Simply as that. So, <clears throat> what becomes, uh, what becomes, uh, where, where, is, where is the obstacle? Again, we come back to uh, rules of the system. System, everything, uh, every interaction of two elements or more uh, is a system on its own. And every single system has its rules of how operate. So if you have, for example, you have a car, it's a system of different components. You have gears, you have motor, you have windows, you have doors, you have this, you have that, and everything is in order. Everything perfectly, smoothly operates until something doesn't go out from order, and then the car stop. The system can't operate. And as the, the same way, the family is a system. Two People, the marriage is a system. 
the neighborhood is a system, the country is a system, everything of that is a system, and something we think it's governed by the moral and social standards and laws that we put in place, like a laws of um, any laws that we need to govern by, like government governed by the laws, and they said you pay taxes, you do this, if you don't do that, you go to jail. Simply because they think that the society is a system that has the laws. But the foundation of every single social system that exists within the, uh, he organizes the humans, for the essence of that, has a family. Human family. Mother, father with the, with the kids, uh, in between themselves, uh, uh, siblings, uh, brothers and sisters of different generations. And there are the certain laws that apply in a system of the family. And those laws are, are bigger than us. Every system, every system, has its own program that governs the system, rules of the system. And those programs within the system we call conscious, conscience, 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 conscience. Okay, and that's something that operates within the system without our will. And the interest of that program is just only slowly to make systems survive. And that, if you remember when we were talking about the wolf pack, also it's governed by the rules of the system. And also we learned that the interest of the individual is always in service of the system. So the survival of the group of the people and the group of the dogs and the group of the pack is always more important than the survival of any individual creating that system. That includes us. So how do we put ourselves in service of the system? We can choose to live a life with full support of the system, because that is what the system wants us, is to thrive. But because we are not aware of how the system operates and what is the operational system, what is a, a program that one group or one little system, human system operates, then we get to abandon the rules and try to govern the system by our own will. That doesn't go like that. Then we dig in to deep reservoir of the loyalty to the consciousness of the system, to the con conscious. How, how you say that word in that context? Consciousness? No. Conscience. Con con conscience. Conscience of the system. Loyalty to a conscience of the system means that we want to do something different. And by wanting to do different, we end up doing the same. Repeating the same problems that our parents had. How? For example, my father was an alcoholic. And then maybe he was aggressive towards my mother. And maybe... I wanted to save my mother when they start fighting. And maybe when I intervene in that fight, I end up as well being beaten, maybe. And it can be so intense that's also, you know, a matter of life and death, maybe. And by experiencing those things, slowly, on top, of my life, my love to my dad and my dad to me, a new memory arises, memory of the abuse. So the memory of the abuse slowly covers the love that flows by law from the son, from the father to a son and from son to, towards the life. So now I say I hate my father and I don't want to become an alcoholic. And I don't even touch the alcohol. How terrible that is for me. 
And then what happens, I might attract in my life my partner that's maybe also a son or a daughter of the alcoholic. And then she doesn't touch an alcohol or he doesn't touch an alcohol because of that, because of the memory of what's going on. And because we are so intensely against death, what creates us the way we are, our son end up being alcoholic or addicted. The generational entanglements and rules often apply through the transgenerational transmission of the trauma. So if I experience that and uh, my wife might end up, or my partner, my husband, my wife can end up being a son of addicted father, and she, governed by the same hatred towards her father, will probably lead towards me. So we would make, make a marriage, uh, obviously creating a relationship with our kids that we, that will lead them to an alcoholic, to become an alcoholic or addicted, or no matter what. So now you can say that this is my uh, uh, this is my observation, this is what I think, this is what, uh, what's my whatever, but it says it's um, the belt Hering Hellinger was, uh, was observing the, was observing the, 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 the rules, how the family organize, how the family as a system organizes itself. The mechanics and the electro engineers are creating rules by create uh, by using the same rules they're able to create a machine perfect machine that will operate and move on and take us from the point a to point b what's actually the 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 source of the the, the reason why we have a car so now the car can be big can be small can be yellow can be white but the purpose of the car is to take us from one point to another point as safest as possible and fastest as possible so all of the pieces of that system called car unite within, governed by the, some law that will make of use to this, to this machine. So when we observe a family as a system, then the family has a system to provide a life and survive and thrive. And in the long run of the evolution by the laws of nature, it will be a point of survival, only physical survival. The system doesn't care about how do you feel, what's going on through your mind, why you are doing this, why you are doing that. doesn't matter, nothing, nothing, nothing. Only survival matters. That's part of the system. That's why system exists. And why all of those trauma are buried within our mind? It's exactly because the idea of the system is to thrive and survive. So why we are carrying those memories? Because we survived using tactics and ideas that helped us survive, no matter what was that. So the brain carries memory of soon when we face the same possible situation, we should act the same. And there is only three things that we can do in, when something like that happens. Flight, fight, or freeze. So if the child experience abuse, the child can fight with the parents, the ch probably ch can fight or fly away. What happens with the child, the child freezes. And then every single time through the life, whenever experience the same environment, no matter in which relationship, that's what we do because our brain learned to freeze. And then count how to unfreeze is actually to see the, uh, the, the, the event that happened that cover the pureness of the love with, uh, with, this, with this memory of trauma. And that is how the dogs are actually great and perfect, um, uh, perfect uh, guide to a, to a source of trauma. Because if you don't look at your dog from the point of, okay, my dog has this issue and my dog has that issue, it behaves this way and behaves that way. But you observe a dog's behavior through the lens of metaphor, what that would mean when analyzed from the perspective and point of your life. Again, come back, when and under which circumstances the dog entered, that particular dog entered your, 
entered your life. And you will probably be able to exactly point the day and time when that dog going to be leaving you. Because exactly what, whatever was the message of that dog to you when delivered, the dogs are just gone. Simply. They're going to die like in instantly of some sort of the accident or they're going to just fall asleep for no matter what reason. Usually when, when they fulfill their destiny and their dharma, uh, they usually experience an instant death. That would be like car accident, accident of any kind, blowing, uh, you know, that, uh, that sudden death that occurs like overnight or things like that. That just, you know, they're ready to transition because mission accomplished. That's all. And then we should cherish that. We should allow that to be and to happen because, yeah, that's exactly. And that's how it's uh, on one point uh, crucial for us to understand. Then we do take a number of the dogs within us towards the path because we do need all of that help and support. But once when the help and support is delivered and the purpose of the dog finishes its path in our life, they just go because mission accomplished and fulfilled. And you shouldn't worry if that's a black dog. It will, it will, um, you should, that's, that's easy to, you know, embrace and it does make a lot of sense when we learn that uh, last incarnation of the soul uh, in the body of the animal before, for the first time, it's going to be born in the body of the man is a black dog. So if you have a black dog, you should be very, very uh, proud uh, that you are in service of something greater. You are preparing the soul uh, for the for the birth in the in the in the environment in the you know like a youngest soul in the in embodied in the body of the man. I like that, and I think it's very when when you see that's when you say like a black dog is a curse for the owner, but also you see the, the number, you, when you observe the data, you see that the mankind and humankind has a problem with the black dogs because those dogs will be easier, uh, easiest to abandon, abandon, abandoned, right? And those people, um, those dogs will be most difficult to, um, to find a new home after uh, in shelter. And those, do those unfortunately, those dogs will be the most put down. Most of those dogs will be put down. And then we don't know actually what's happening with the soul of the dog if we, if we kill them, actually. How that affects our karma. So when we talk about the euthanasia you or that's compassionate killing, you have one of my uh, videos uh, talking about that. And I, I think all of us should be aware that even though it's uh, morally and uh, environmentally and socially accepted way of dealing with the old age dog, I think we can do better. The dogs deserve much more uh, from us than just, uh, you know, weakness of ours of not being able to cope with their law, uh, with, the, with their transitioning. And that's, that's very important part to address because I think holds us back a lot. So I think that's answered your question in a lot of words, but. Yeah, it did. And I also think it's interesting how you always bring back the dynamic of the mother and father and how and why. And why do you think that message is so hard for people to listen to and to accept? Or why is there so much resistance to that? Because you know, start from us. There is, there is always when you know there is always something that we have uh, that we have to say about our parents. That is why we live in the world we live in. Look at the world we live in, and everything will have, will be explained. Like look at the uh, uh, the way that the people are kind of you know interacting in with, within each other. The people are you know we don't have any way of compassion towards none and not no, not towards ourselves. Uh, wars, constant war in 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 the mankind's you know since the World War II there there was not a free time that we had some time with no war you know mm -hmm. it just changes its uh, its place but it's constantly present and uh, if if uh, if we would find a peace within that peace would radiate all over the place so we would live in a peaceful place and on a peaceful planet if we would have a peace within and what does it mean i can find a peace within i have a problem with myself because i can't reach the pure love and harmony within myself by embracing my parents the way they are you know that's the first thing is to allow your parents to be humans 
to with all uh, all of what what's going on and try to overcome the obstacles of their behavior no matter how hard they were to us until when we're gonna blame them for the life we live until when when is enough when is enough when is enough when when that uh, when that times come when i okay now i'm grown up enough I don't need a horse. I don't need the, uh, all the promises that they try to deliver and be. I'm. I. I. I need to for not to forget. I need to overcome that slap or his aggression or whatever. Because until I I deal with that, it's my burden. That's nothing to do with me, and that is how I take his energy and his action. That I take them on myself. And you, usually someone else is going to pay the price for that. My partner, my co co-worker, my boss, my someone else is going to pay for that because I was not able to heal the father within myself. And that's, that's, that's you know, the, the perfect partner. Oftentimes we have that relationship with the parent, with the child, children become a, a parents to a parent because we know better. We know better. And if we know better, then we, you, we cut short our possibility to find a partner until we can know better. Why? Because you mean knowing like the attitude of, oh, I'm more smarter than my uh, mother yeah. and father. I know better than them. Is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah. And then oftentimes, sometimes we can, we can have a kids because of that. Maybe we, we stay without parents. Why? Because we already have kids. Energetically, we have kids. We have parents for kids. We are parents to our parents. And then if that comes to a point of how you observe and why all of, why everything of this matters? Because until we do not bypass that, there is two births that we get in our life, as Vlado Ilich, my mentor, would say. The first one is the moment when we left our mother womb and the second birth is the moment when we detangle ourselves from everything that's not ours and st start finally to live the life within full potential of ours. And that's limitless. The moment when I stop identifying myself and I become, uh, I become, uh, I become, a, I become a sore expression of the source beyond expression of identity. I don't identify with nothing. I don't identify with my name, with my job, with my, with my country, with my sexuality. I don't identify. That's all part of me, integral part of me, but not source and not me. It's not I-ness. It, everything of that is in service of I. And until I'm not able to bring the peace in myself by embracing my parents the way they are, because that's the first step to the peace. And yet so hard to do. What was the last time when you told to your father, I love you the way you are. I love you exactly as you are. With everything in you that I hate and everything in you that I hate a little less. I, I love you for who you are. What if you don't hate anything? The question becomes, are you frozen? Are you frozen? Because there is, there, the, the, because the, the un love and hatred is, uh, is the same, is the same spot, is the same point. What is the, what is the opposite of love? Hate. No. I said exactly now, I said that's the same point. Just the same point, just a different side of the same point. What is that? Fear. Fear is opposite of love. Where the love exists, there is no place for fear. And where the fear exists, there is no love. And then oftentimes, 
that's how that's how you would know that 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 you kind of uh, that you actually love your parents because the hatred is within the point of love that's the same that's the same dynamic just the love is a creation poor force of creation and the hatred is a destructive love because la la everything we do from love everything we did everything we do from love the parents would go to work and they would then be at home because they love us and they want us to have a life that they didn't have because their parents couldn't afford so th you you would say you would say that your father was never present in your life and if you ask your father i just try to um, try to make you have a better life than i did and you would hate him for not being present and then it would end up being uh, uh, you hate him because you are not that's not actually hatred it's anger i'm angry at my father i'm angry at my father because he was not present and why why i'm angry at her actually because i'm hurt so everything what actually starts the first is i'm i'm missing my, my father especially let's say if the father dies when the child is young so what happened first is a big pain so the pain starts because of loss of the father so the pain would be the first thing to experience and then when the pain remains for a long time turns into a sorrow i become numbed of the pain and if sorrow stays longer enough then i experience anger so I'm angry at my father. I'm angry because he left. He left me alone. Of course he died because of no matter what reason was his destiny to go on. That was his path. But then the little child thinks like I'm just abandoned. He left me. So the big pain turned into sorrow. And then sorrow turns into a, into a anger. And anger can cause the hatred but that's on the same line so how so now we loved we loved in pureness and then we stopped and then because of that intense love we started to uh, we lost the father source of love and now we become sad because our father is gone and then sadness turn pain turn into sadness sadness turn into anger and if we want to reverse that, the process is the same. From the anger, you agree to sadness. From the sadness, you agree to pain. And when, when you agree to the pain, then you agree that your father died and that was his destiny. And then you agreed to his love. I love you for who you are. And I take you for who you are. And that's the only way out. You can your your mind can wibble around, but we tried, we tried psychos psychotherapy, we tried depression, we tried antidepression, we tried so much things, nothing works. Maybe give a try to the real talk. Why the dogs doesn't meet their parent doesn't miss their parents? Because they're animals. And the humans are just homo sapiens. So we can we divided this world into homo sapiens and so-called, lately they call it non-human non animals. So how, did, how happened that no animal is missing their parents? Especially dogs, the pack mentality, pack social structure of the dog is a pack, pack is a family, family is a foundation of the of the of the society of the human humans uh, is because uh, dogs are aware of this law that the present of the life starts with the parents and that's it we carry they carry them in the life even the father is a labrador and the mother is a poodle the place for them in is in the heart of a baby and wherever the baby goes the family is within you have that in a spiritual journey of any religion. You touch any. Who is the mother and the father of the Pope? Do you know? 
Who is the mother and the father of the of any monk of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi of anyone? Who are their parents? Unknown to a public. Would the child, would the monk, any monk, go to a to a uh, you know funeral or to uh, how you say that to um, grief loss of the parents? No. They get new name. They forget about what was going on in family they do belong before they get to a spiritual journey within any religious organization. Because that's the path. That's how the laws of nature operate. Wherever you go, if you are ready for the journey of the spiritual awakening, you carry your parents within your body, within your heart. That's freedom. That's freedom. That's ultimate state of freedom is where I agree, you say yes to the mother and yes to the father means yes to myself. And the most, more, more difficult is a question to answer, most difficult to question, how can I say yes to the father that abused me? But bigger the challenge to go through that experience is, the bigger freedom becomes. And then that freedoms release both son and the father. And it's a work for the generation. Everything you do for yourself or you don't do for yourself, or no matter what reason, you do or don't do for your children. And that's how dangerous is. If you become aware of journey and aware of actions you need to take, but for no matter what reason, you, uh, you feel weak enough or whatever is that you say, I, I can't do this because I'm too weak, or this is not what I think it should be done, or then the, how you say that, everything hits in your mind, that's uh, why it should be done, why not to be done, blah, blah, blah. And I said, this was a journey of the experience of 30 years. Nothing was giving a sense and a meaning and healing to my life. I went from the suicidal thoughts to a suicidal experience almost, to a way of, uh, of, uh, of surviving myself because of the dogs and then, you know, turning to a dogs and living a life next to a dogs, learning from dogs and finding the same structure in the family constellation, dynamic meditation and, uh, and the therapy. And that is, why, why, that is why I was able to combine all of that. And finally, the family constellation led me to my father and to, real my, and to realness of my mother. And then to the real life that unfolded after that, that I experience now. It's hard to live in dedication to a service. But it's a blessed way to experience. That you don't do things because they are easier to be done. Mm. But you do them because you need to do them. Can you mm. uh, just uh, talk a little bit? I want to bring that little book. I want to... Uh, Read some something from that Yogananda's law of success. Share your uh, thoughts with the with the people for a second. I'm, I'm back in a, one second. Excuse me. So as we're waiting for Sasha to come back, you can let us know if these types of discussion about family constellation really how they relate to the dogs and how we can use these principles and these laws to enhance our relationship if that's a big interest to you and what topics really spark your interest and what you would love to know more about oh that was very fast but yeah because i know what it says so <clears throat> it says it's from a little book uh, of Yogananda. It's called Law of Success. And uh, under the section, Habits of Thoughts Control One's Life. Habits of Thoughts Control One's Life. And then he said, If you are able to free yourself from all kind of bad habit, and if you are able to do good because you want to do good and not merely because evil brings sorrow, then you are truly progressing in spirit. It's the only when you dis discard your bad habits that you are really a free man. Until you are a true master, able to command yourself to do things that you should do but not may want to do, 
you are not a free soul. In that power of self-control lies the sea lays the lies the seed of eternal eternal freedom. So that's where the where the idea of doing things we should do but maybe don't want to do will bring us to a liberation from these things. Knowing about the laws within that governs the system of the of the family or of the pack and obey obey to them embracing what is to be embraced because other people on this journey went healed after doing that may might be might be difficult might take time but the dedication and control of things we should do but don't want to do after we take them under control and conquer them we just live a life of someone something pretending and all of the freedom of the life and abundance around going to just bypass us and we're going to think that actually we're going to blame the destiny circumstances life parents and everything and that's how going to end up being blamed by our kids for doing the same that's how it goes yeah that was very beautiful very powerful as always and i think this is a good place to end the discussion and to just give us a chance to reflect and to digest bring your father to a memory or bring your father to a picture in front of you and open your heart and that stillness of the emotions in this work is actually what's what's healing on its own heart that doesn't judge but also doesn't forget it's not about releasing trauma and drama and getting back in the past over and over and over and over and over, and over. no defreezing the heart and have emotions covered with stillness and in that power of being present uh, lies lays the bravery and strength to do what is to be done so Thank you so much for your time, for your wonderful night. I hope um, you enjoyed. I know it was hard because it was hard for me to talk about that. Especially because, but I, on the other side, I'm very proud of myself for the work I did. Because I love, I love my father. I'm ready to say that now after 48 years. I love my father for who he is. And I'm not saying that just because it could be said. I, I was doing, I was saying those words just as a as a words, mumbling them almost. But now I'm telling it with a heart. I love you for who you are. Thank you. And have a wonderful night. See you next Thursday at 7 p.m. Um, uh, Pacific Central Time, Pacific Time, right? Pacific LA Time. LA Time. Okay. Love you. Bye.